Hey kids, do you like previews? Once again, preview season is upon us. Calderheim previews have started a little bit earlier than normal with a week of metal this year, and then we'll go into the full previews in January. We've got bands like Amon Math and other metal bands that I haven't heard of, all revealing stuff from the new set, and honestly, I think that's kind of cool, and I'm... It's I'm perfectly okay with it. Some people got a bit funny, some people got, this isn't the metal that I like, or I don't like metal, and those people are just, I think those takes are kind of just completely unfucking reasonable. What the fuck? Previews, who got them, when and where, it's all of the mothership on a, on a list of, like, uh, content creator plus date. And that's right, your boy got a preview this time. Now, I've been left out of previews for, like, almost a year now, for reasons I don't really understand. One of the funny things about previews is that no one actually understands how you get one. They are seemingly decided at random. They can't give them to everyone, which is fair. There is a lot of content creators out there that would love a preview. Um, and who gets them and what kind of previews they get is seemingly random. I've seen limited... Um, channels that make limited content get like constructed staple reprints and stuff like that. It's kind of almost like no one at Wizards knows what anyone makes content wise. I, I mean, that possibly can't be the case, right? No, that definitely is the case. They have no fucking idea what content everyone makes. And honestly, if I get a draft shaft on common or common, I'm going to give it back to them. Not because I'm ungrateful, but basically, when you make a preview video, unless you are really starting out fresh with a very small audience, it doesn't really bring any more eyes to your content. It will be clipped out of the video or the stream or taken off of your Twitter and then posted to Reddit and eventually put onto Mythic Spoiler and then no one knows you previewed it. The idea that I'd make any effort or take any time out of my day to do a talking head video like this about a card that is a draft common that no one cares about, it just doesn't really fill me with any excitement so I'm not going to waste my time doing it. So if I get a draft common or uncommon, I'm going to give it back and suggest they give it to someone who might be able to utilise it in a way that might drive some eyes to their content. But again, draft commons and uncommons don't really get people to come in and watch a video where you talk about what they can and can't do. Rares and Mythics drive that, and not everyone can get those either. So there's this real fine balancing act, I guess. I don't think most people will benefit from getting a preview card. The real thing you get from getting a preview card is the, like, the endorphin rush. The... Oh... I've been acknowledged. So yeah, if I'm excited for the card, I'll make it. If not, I'll politely um, tell them to probably give it to someone else who might feel a bit more, I don't know, excited for it. The reason I'm making this video is that Spice 8 Rack, my boy, uh, Connor, tweeted this out recently. Which is that the coast should pay the creators they ask to advertise their products during preview season. The idea that being given a card uh, to preview is a privilege and a payment in and of itself is exploitative and backwards. The idea that the preview system itself brings in more viewers equal more YouTube revenue is something that I once believed and is therefore compensated uh, after the fact is deeply flawed. Materially, preview videos don't tend to perform better than non-previews. If anything, they perform a bit worse. And he goes on to share some like um, graphs of the performance of one of his preview videos to one of his other videos, which is, I don't disagree with what Connor's saying, and this video is not a dunk or a drag or any of that shit that everyone engages with on Twitter. Connor is a good friend of mine, but I wanted to engage with the topic a little bit. I do think that saying they perform worse is true, but you've got to bear in mind, for example, in Connor's case, that he puts out very highly produced long form content like once or twice a month big videos that are fantastic but then when you then compare them to like a preview video which is a much smaller self-contained thing with I don't know, less social or political commentary, they're gonna almost appeal to different audiences. It's kind of like me saying that my Warhammer videos perform less well. Well, of course they do. It's a different audience. But ultimately, in spite of that small nitpick from me, he's right. They do tend to not draw in more eyes. Like I said, if you're a small channel not gathering that many views and you put a preview video up, it's going to drag people in and you can impress them with your insight or your production value or something and try and keep some of those viewers returning. So it can be good. But for everyone else who's already got a bit of an audience to a larger, medium, whatever size audience, it's more of a status symbol to get a preview card. Should Wizards of the Coast pay people to preview their cards? Morally? I would say yes. Like, in my heart of hearts, I'm like, people should be paid for their work. Realistically and practically in the situation, the system and the world we live in, it just doesn't work. If you go down the list of people who are previewing cards on the Mothership, there are a lot of names that are relatively small. And for a return on investment on paying those people, Wizards wouldn't get the, that return. They simply wouldn't. They wouldn't get the new eyes, they wouldn't get the, the buzz that they've won. In many ways, giving out preview cards is a way to placate fans and the community. It's like 
community outreach, if anything. When they're paying money into an activation or integration, and bearing in mind I'm coming from a position where I have been paid by Wizards before to make content for them to be in events and things like that, they are looking to get some sort of return that will be um, no more eyes on the product and yada, yada, all that marketing gump shit. And they have paid me for events where I've had to go and spend hours and hours there, and they've paid me for like paid activations where they've wanted strict things to be said. They do that in uh, you know in line with what you'd expect. When it comes to preview cards, though, there aren't those expectations. You can literally just put it up on screen and make fart noises with your mouth, and as long as you've got hashtag free preview or hashtag sponsored and that shit in it, it's it's fair game. There's no expectation there you can put the minimum amount of effort in if you want and some people just tweet out their previews right pros you often see who don't make any content at all because they're not content producers they're just professional magic players they will just tweet pictures of their card out and make an assessment or sometimes just say here's the card with art by why because they don't want to make a statement that ends up being incorrect when they misjudge the card because most people misjudge cards that sounds like i'm throwing a lot of shade but i'm not that's just what happens but, like I said, I do think people should be paid for their time, and some people put a lot of time and effort into their preview cards. For my first preview card, I foolishly uh, spent time and energy going to get a printout of the card on a cake, and I smashed the cake into my face. Um, I can't even remember what the exact logic was. Oh, I think I said I would eat my first preview card if I ever got one, because I said I wouldn't, because I said words like, fuck and shit ass. But I did it. I ate the card. It was just a giant chocolate version of said card. I even had to get a letter from Wizards of the Coast saying it was okay for me to take it to the local shop to get a printout of it. Because the company that was printing the cake thing so they wouldn't replicate a copyright image without express permission for the copyright owner. It was a lot of hassle, but it ended up being a bit of fun. That got absolutely no views. But I enjoyed making it, and it was an experience. However, that cake cost me some money, and there was time and effort that went into me filming it and cleaning up and editing it and all that shit. People should be recompensed for their time and energy especially if that time and energy is transferring into advertising for your product but without the return on investment wizards won't do this they just won't there's no reason for them to do it if hypothetically there was a change tomorrow where they had to pay creators under some new law hypothetical this is like a thought um experiment okay if they had to do that they probably would just stop giving smaller creators the cards and would continue to see what we're seeing now bands a monomath outside influencers and websites previewing big splashy bomb mythics and rares and the funny thing is the rares and the mythics and the splashy shit that's the stuff that will probably drive views. If you get to preview the face planeswalker of a set in a video, that's the sort of thing that will drive up your numbers. But they give that stuff to Forbes and things and probably pay them to do it as well. It's not a catch-22. I'm not sure exactly where... It's just shit, I guess, but that's just the way it is. And the, just saying it's just the way it is, I understand, is not like you know, not to excuse something. Saying capitalism is bad and then just staring at you blankly when you're criticizing capitalism isn't the best way to engage with things. But from a realistic perspective of what do we expect to get out of this conversation, this is kind of where we're at. However, I do have some things that I want to suggest that might be helpful towards change in this like area. Whilst I don't believe Wizards of the Coast can practically or would want to pay smaller creators to preview their cards, even $50 to $100 might not get them that return on investment uh, that they want, the, the impressions per pound or impressions per dollar or whatever fucking nonsense marketing would say, they could perhaps invest in the community in other ways. There is a content creator program right now that is, quite frankly, garbage. It is existing in a hole in a corner of a room somewhere at Wizards HQ. I don't know if anyone's even managing it. It was like an automated system. I was rejected. There's a there's a, there's a a link in the description below in the cards. I was rejected from this program with an automated email. That's why I was rejected twice for two very similar reasons. Because it was pre-populated. Um, so I was rejected. Elizabeth Eden, who streams a bit of magic and does some sexy pictures on OnlyFans and stuff like that, was rejected for being too sexy or sexual. And Loading Ready Run, the people who make the pre-pre-release a sponsored piece of content for Wizards of the Coast, were rejected for not meeting arbitrary stream goals. The content creator program is designed just to hype up Arena. Hell, I don't know how the management of Wizards of the Coast works, but it might be in Arena's budget and nothing to do with a preview of cards. However, I think this thing needs reworking. If you've got people logging into this and they have their accounts integrated to it, you can give people a fuck ton of gems, for example, to help them. I know it's not monetary compensation, which is what people want for their work. I get that. But content creation isn't free. I have reached out in the past, asking for event tickets on Modo, got told they wouldn't do that. So I must have to stream and make videos. Because... Every week, 
I have to buy event tickets on Modo, and I have a rental service to rent the decks now, where it used to be that I'd buy the cards for them. It costs money to do that. Arena, even worse. No rental system, the economy is, quite frankly, dog shit. So gems would help there as well. Because if you want to make new decks each week to make gameplay from, because that's the angle you're going for, or just streaming, even just five hours a week of magic, gems would make that experience easier, smoother, and perhaps like less costly to you and therefore that converts into you making free advertisement for the company potentially for free apart from your time and that is something they should be doing they should be making people who are committing to making content they should allow them to make that content for as cheaply as possible but instead we have a content creator program that just doesn't work or do anything apart from force people to tweet spam some shit for a couple of arena codes they don't reimburse anyone for the advertising of making content or doing previews and then the Previews are handed out willy-nilly anyway, so no one really understands how they get them. It's all just kind of really messy. Like, really, really messy. I'm not going at anyone in particular at Wizards of the Coast here, but there isn't a community manager anymore. They recently moved on to Pastures New, and I don't know... Or maybe the position was filled, but it's not been talked about. And quite frankly, I guess the community just needs some liaison and some management. Why aren't people being helped out with their streaming and content creation? Why are people previewing cards for free and getting nothing? Not even a thing that would cost Wizards of the Coast zero money to give out. They're not even getting that stuff. I do know that a community manager would cost Wizards of the Coast money, and I do know that a revamp of the Arena Creator program would also cost Wizards of the Coast money, but I think that would be a long-term investment. Instead of trying to pay out to random smaller YouTubers that they will not get a return on, which doesn't seem practical, they could invest into a system that helps people to create the content around your game. So to summarise, ideally, I think people should be paid for their time, but from a practicality perspective, in this current circumstance, this current ecology of magic creators and preview cards and wizards, it's just not practical. So there we have it. I do think creators should be reimbursed for their time and energy if they can be. I don't think they can be under the current system. So wizards should be doing something else to foster community relations. Not just giving people preview cards and winking at them when they put the preview video out and then realise that actually it wasn't all it was cracked up to be. I've been Vince, also as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I hope you've enjoyed this ramble. And hopefully I'll be back with a gameplay or bigger video tomorrow, depending on which one I get edited once I've finished this. I've been Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button, smash the bell, and tell me in the comment section below what you think about this whole... It's not a drama, it's not a controversy, it's a conversation being had. Do you think I'm right? Do you think they could endorse us in other ways and support us in other ways to make content? Or do you think I'm a little bit off base and they should just pay everyone? And if so, do you think they would pay everyone if that was mandatory? Let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. To tell for now.